Hello everyone and welcome to Jam Academy. In this example we have two blocks, two identical blocks of mass M um, tied to two strings as shown in the diagram on the board. As the peg rotates, block 1 and 2 maintains a uniform circular motion. The phrase uniform circular motion indicates that the angular velocity and the speed of the block around the circle remains constant. Another way to show this in a diagram will look like this. You have two blocks, one on an outer circle and one in an inner circle. So this is block one and that is block 2. This The radius from here to here is r and the radius from here to here is 2r. So you have the two blocks rotating about the center with an angular velocity omega. Now we are required to calculate the ratio um, between the tensions in the string. So let's first begin by doing a free body diagram. We have here, this is block 1, and this is block 2. There is a tension T2, there is a tension T2, and there is a tension in this direction T1. Now remember that the direction of the centripetal acceleration is directed inwards. So what that implies is we are going to apply Newton's second law for block 1 and Newton's second law for block 2 separately. If we do that, we will end up with this for block 1. We know that the summation of FR is equal to M1 AR so, this means that T1 minus T2 is equal to MV squared all divided by R. Let's call this equation 1. So, for block 2, we also know that the summation of FR will be equal to MAR, which implies that T2 is equal to m v squared all divided by 2r remember the distance is r plus r um, since this would mean that t2 is equal to one half m v squared all divided by r so the next question is we need to use this expression of equation 2 and substitute it in equation 1 that would mean that T1 minus bracket 1 half MV squared over R equal to MV squared over R, which means that T1 will be equal to um, MV squared over R plus one half m v square over r this is the same as m v square over r bracket one plus one half which will be equal to one plus one half is three over two so this is three over two m v square all divided by r hence you can clearly see that you can clearly clearly conclude that T1 is greater than T2. T1 is far more greater than T2. What does that imply? It implies that as omega increases, the string that will most likely break first will be string 1. Let me see that again. The string that will most likely break first will be string 1. So by the question was to calculate this ratio, T1 divided by 
T2 will be equal to 3 over 2 mv square over r divided by 1 half mv square over r. This takes care of this, and this is equal to 3 over 2 multiplied by 2 over 1, which is equal to 3. In essence, we are saying that T1 is equal to 3 T2. That is the relationship between T1 and T2. It's a very beautiful problem. Another way that you could have handled this problem, which will be totally okay, is the fact that for M1, you have T1 minus T2 equal to M1 R1 omega squared, which is equal to T1 minus T2 equal to M R omega squared. So for block 2, you have T2 equal to M2 R2 omega squared, which implies that T2 is equal to 2 M R omega squared. This is equation 1 and this is equation 2. Hence, if we fit equation 2 in 1, you will have T1 minus 2MR omega squared equal to MR omega squared, which implies that T1 is equal to 3MR omega squared. So this is the expression for T1, and this is the expression for T2. This would therefore mean that T1 divided by T2 will be equal to 3 mr omega squared divided by 2 mr omega squared the m's cancel and this is equal to 3 over 2 um, interesting so if it's 3 over 2 it means that we made a mistake somewhere up here uh, let's review our work <coughs> 